So apparently not everybody in the NFL has figured out who their starting quarterback is going to be for the regular season. So let's focus in on the teams that uh, apparently do not have that decision made. Uh, First and foremost, the Houston Texans, because D'Amico Ryans is still not ready to name C.J. Stroud the starter. Uh, C.J. Stroud has been kind of okay. Seemed like he got a little bit better this last time around in his preseason action. But um, it looks like... D'Amico Ryans is still playing this whole we're having a quarterback competition. Uh, Davis Mills, C.J. Stroud as we get ready for the season. So this will be coming up. Uh, All he wanted to point out to the media was that, hey, we are going to have a quarterback week one against Baltimore, and you guys will see who that is. So I don't know if this is another defensive coach kind of of playing this quarterback game, but nonetheless, the Houston Texans still not totally sold, which I can't imagine what it makes the agent for C.J. J. Stroud, all that thrilled, knowing that he may or may not have to take a picture with a quarterback who's going to be a backup to Davis Mills. Like that's unfortunate for everybody there. So, so there's the latest on the Houston Texans. And then when it comes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, there was a report that was thrown out there from Ira Kaufman, who's been covering Tampa Bay for a long time, that said, "What's up, Ira?" He said that uh, it looks like, and they've talked internally. That Baker Mayfield's going to be the starting quarterback week one. And apparently that's not the case. Mike Evans alluded to that a few days ago. And now you've got Todd Bowles, who's speaking about the situation. So here was the Bucks head coach talking about the timeline and what to expect with the media when it comes to the announcement of QB1 for the regular season. Uh, do, do you have a time for when you want to name a starter publicly? Could this be after the third game and, and wait until after that? You know, we don't have a timetable on it. We'll name it when we name it, and you know we, we feel comfortable with where we're at, so we'll go from there. A different kind of playing field with this quarterback battle when one quarterback plays, but the other one doesn't play at all when you're trying to come up with who's going to be the starter? No, it's not a different kind of playing field. We monitor everything. It's not just preseason games. It's everything that goes through it. They've both been competing hard. Uh, we like what both of them do, and we'll go from there. So there's your uh, your latest on the Bucks quarterback situation. I, I mean, uh, how ahead, else is he supposed to? How else is he supposed to answer it though, Q? You know, I mean, uh, um, well, I, I, here's what I'd say is by now, and, and this is don't get offended when I'm going to say this, okay? D'Amico Ryan's all right. Todd Bowles, what's their background? Are they offense or defense? Defense. And defensive-minded coaches always do this. They always do this. They have a quarterback competition, or they don't want to name the starter, and it kind of drags on. And and I I understand their perspective. They come from a different side of the ball where they need to see the guy do something. They need to see him win the job. He's got to he's got to do something in a preseason game or training camp to separate himself, and he's the one, right? The only issue is, like, with C.J. Stroud, you spent the draft pick already, man. Like, he's your guy. W- whether or not you need to see something from – you don't need to see something in preseason. You need to see something from him in the regular season. And so you're, you're not going to get to if you're having him sit and watch a few weeks to then have Davis Mills start if that's the, the you know, track you're on. So he's going to be the guy. I don't know when they're going to announce it. And then we'll see what he, you know, what he's capable of doing once he gets out there his rookie season. Hopefully, people are patient. Clearly, the Texans roster isn't where it needs to be yet, or where they want it to be, in order to be able to compete for for an AFC South title. In regards to Tampa, look, Trask has been there. They drafted him. I, I'm sure there's people in the front office who want him to have a shot. But you you brought in Baker for a reason. You would have brought in Baker if you thought Trask could be the heir apparent to Tom Brady. And, and so this is just an, an example of a team that, to me, is is going to be in a tough spot this year. Like when you let stuff like this drag on, you're not telling your locker room who the guy is. You're not telling your locker room who the who the a leader, at least on the offensive side of the ball, is. And I always feel like defensive minded head coaches let this stuff drag on longer than they should, or it needs to. And sometimes they'll tell you that it gives them a a greater uh, schematic advantage or you know advantage on their opponent because teams don't know heading into week 1 who's going to be the guy when really like you've got enough time to scout both prepare for both Trask and Bayfield aren't that different 
Um, and so I, I just I always find this to be somewhat comical because you're you're going to end up picking one of the two guys, and in the end, it's it's probably not going to matter all that much. But it's regards- the one you you have in mind to pick. Like you already have them. You already know. At like, this like point, you, you already know. But, yeah. but that's the thing is they feel like there's like this need to see him like make some ridiculous play or have some driver. It's like, no, dude, you know what you need? You needed to get him reps with the group he's playing with because either he hasn't had any experience in Kyle's Trask case since he's been there because of Tom Brady's taking all those reps, or Baker Mayfield just got there. So e- either one needs to get as many reps as possible because there's a lot of other teams out there that have quarterbacks that have more experience in the system and the offense. Now, it just so happens that in the NFC South, Desmond Ritter's the one with the most experience. Not saying playing in the NFL, but at least in the division, right, with Derek Carr being new, Bryce Young being new. But I'm just saying, like, those are advantages that you miss out on because you're trying to have a quarterback competition. It's like, man, it's a business. Like, if you brought Baker Mayfield in, you brought him in because you think he's experienced, you think he's got upside, you think he can help your team win football games. Flat out. And there's no reason to let this thing drag on. You're only hurting your own team at this point. By not allowing the receivers and the offensive line, everyone to, to mesh and have chemistry with who's going to be the guy. So I just I feel like this is always – it ends up being a defensive line head coach who lets this stuff drag on longer than it should – and, and unfortunately, I think it's going to hurt them this season. <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting that it would be a defensive player to do it because it's all about deception. You know, right. defensive coordinators, defensive minded guys are all about less is more or give the illusion of of what it may or may not be. I mean, isn't that kind of what's going on in Tennessee, too? I mean, <laughs> well, Tannehill's the guy. It's more for the backup spot between yeah, yeah. Levis right. and. Uh, um, you think it's a, you think they're you think he's married to that that it's going to be him. Tannen, oh, it's it's for sure going to be Tannenhill. I, 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 well, I guess we'll, I guess for now. I mean, at least for the sake of what this conversation is. Yes, he's the starter, but I, I, you know, anyway, it, it it could end up being someone else that that does it. In Tennessee, if, if if you're asking me, but you know, I I really believe with with Bowles, Coach Bowles, that he's more so. I don't think this is strategy at this point. I, I think that it is a a careful approach, possibly, to what he's doing because I think it is obviously. I I think it's Baker Mayfield that he's going to go with. Um, and I would assume most people would think that it's Baker Mayfield that he's going to go with and see if if that can work before he he you know pulls the ripcord on that because I think it's it's I think it's an easier sell if you go if you start with Baker Mayfield and it doesn't work and you got to pivot and go in different direction if you come to Baker Mayfield after the fact of something not going right. I think that that doesn't. I don't, I don't think that's as easy a sale, and and so to me, I, I think he's going to start with Baker Mayfield, and I think Baker is going to have the opportunity to to prove that he can be the starter, and I don't know if he's not making that readily available or readily known based upon what he may think of Baker Mayfield, based upon what he's gotten to know of Baker Mayfield, but. This could be one of those situations where he's actually managing it based upon the personality traits of the person that he's he's working with. I don't you know, I don't know. But as far as with D'Amico Ryans, I, I, I would say go go get it like you guys have not been good. You're a great feel good story. You're you're a native son of the team. Like, go get it. Like, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Like, go with Stroud. Let him get his lumps and his bumps and his bruises. But let him get him. You know, and, and let him let him have the team because there's. I mean, I don't know how rock bottom them, right? you guys are. <laughs> but that's rock, why you drafted them. That's why you drafted them. That is why you drafted them. Wouldn't if you were one of the teammates? Wouldn't you want to know at this point? Like, hey, who's our quarterback? Yeah. Like Mike Evans, you know, played it cool, but you could tell he was kind of frustrated last week. Like, I just you know looking for some clarity on this. Just want to know, like, hey, hey Jonas, imagine, imagine you and Q are in a quarterback 
battle, right? Oh, it'd be a tight one too. And your yeah, and your court and and your your receivers like are torn, and and like one of them starts eating lunch with you, and the other one is eating lunch with with. Well, Jonas you. doesn't eat lunch, so that'd be the easy. Thing. I mean, I don't know why. Well, 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 while me. he's eating, yeah. peppers, why am I being attacked? <laughs> yeah. While you're eating peppers um, and tomatoes, um, like an apple. <laughs> You're now putting those receivers in a possible position where it's like, huh, well, this is my favorite. He's my go-to guy. But like, if this you, is who I'm cool with. So like, like In the case of C.J. Stroud, that's one of the ones to where when you make the commitment to him, you're rolling with him this whole year. When it comes to the Bucks, if you do go with Mayfield and he struggles... Just, just put, tra- yeah, put Trask yeah. in. Like I, I don't. It feels like it's it's complicating something that isn't all that complicated. Or you're turning it into a complication. You're turning it into it. Like you, in a way, you've now turned it into a focal point. Like you could have minimized it by just announcing your starter. But I think by continuing on, because there's going to be the conversation of Tom Brady retiring. That's the number one conversation connected to it. Right. Boom. All right. And then now it's like okay. And they can't even figure out who they want to put at quarterback. You could have put kind of that to bid and and gave the team the opportunity to Q's point to actually gain that continuity, gain that trust for one another moving forward and to continue to kind of hold it over everyone's head and hold them back from having that, that opportunity to bond. I mean, that is that's it, it could be considered counterproductive for certain. Yeah, I don't know, it's a little a little odd, but both teams, by the way, projected to be non-playoff teams this year. So Ooh. that's probably a stunning side note to all this. But uh, there's the uh, there's the update on two teams who apparently haven't decided who their starting quarterback is going to be, and the season is fast approaching in the NFL.